Hello there. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, don't mind my ball. It's my microphone. And I'm trying to get decent audio quality. So I took the cover off so that I'm a little louder. But it also might make me a little more um, poppy. So you'll have to stick with me. Today I thought I would go over some of my Arthurian novels and books and just give some fun thoughts about them. This is just kind of a video for fun. Um, I'm not going to be going too in-depth into anything. Yeah, just some cool books on King Arthur, or related to King Arthur. Either or. So I'll start with one that's the most... Uh, Amongst the nonfiction ones, it's the most kind of lightweight. King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table by Martin J. Doherty, or something. I don't know how to pronounce Irish last names. It's very much like a coffee table book. I like it because it's got pictures. Lots of them. This is one that I like to read or look at if I'm just trying to pass some time. And I want to do it in an Arthurian way. So I recommend it if you for some reason stumble upon it. It's a good book. I'm not wrong with it. Another one I have, uh, kind of like the one really, if you think about it, is La Mort d'Arthur by Geoffrey of Monmouth. So this is a medieval book um, written, I think, in the 11th century. Don't quote me on that, but I think so. And it's got the archaic language and all. So it's kind of like reading the King James Bible. You know, the these and the thous and the thou shalt. Like, I'll read you a little uh, sentence here. Then after the departing of King Ban of King and of King Bors, King Arthur rode into Caerleon. And thither came to him King Lot's wife of Orkney, in manner of a message, but she was sent thither to espy the court of King Arthur, and she came richly beseen, with her four sons, Gawain, Gehiris, Agravine, and Gareth. So, if you don't know what I just said, that's okay. It's very archaic. But, it's purdy. It's nice to look at. And it's kind of OG, you know? It's a uh, it's, uh, real old... Arthur text. Um, a lot of what people know about King Arthur comes from this, uh, whereas less people are aware of the version of Arthur that's in my next one, which is the Mabinogian. So this is like a work of Welsh mythology, essentially. It's organized into branches. The Celts were big fans of leaf and branch analogies. Um, they had a very naturalistic worldview. So yeah, it's got four branches. King Arthur's in here. A lot of other Brythonic figures are in here. It's very neat. This translation I find very legible. So I'll read a sentence from this just for comparison. When he had finished his repast, the maiden arranged his couch. Come here, said she, and sleep, and I will go and woo for thee. And Owain went to sleep, and the maiden shut the door of the chamber after her, and went towards the castle. When she came there, she found nothing but mourning and sorrow, and the countess in her chamber could not bear the sight of anyone through grief. So still a little archaic, but uh, somehow I find it less so. And I can't recommend this highly enough for anyone who's interested in Celtic mythology or worldview. It's, you really do get the sense like you're glimpsing into ancient times when you read this. Quite nice. Now this one's only kind of t uh, tangentially related to Arthur, as in he's in here, but so is like everyone else in the Celtic world. So it's very much like what it says, an A to Z of people and places in Celtic myth and legends. Um, it's got them all, even really minor individuals who probably no one really knows about if you don't go looking. But it does indeed have our boy, King Arthur. 
And of course, because I'm trying to look for him right now, I'm going to have... I don't know what my pinky's doing. I don't know. My pinky's always doing weird things. Don't mind my pinky. I'm going to have a hard time finding Arthur because I'm looking for him on a video. But he's in here. Somewhere. I do know my alphabet. It's just... I'm very close, but I know I'm going to waste way too much time looking for him. Good book. No pictures. So if you like pictures, you know, not as good maybe. But if you like to, if you really want to get into the kind of nitty gritty and I find it's really, it's kind of like a, a book version of a wiki page, you know, because I, I really like wiki for the rabbit holes it brings me down. Um, you can start on one page. You see a hyperlink leading to another topic, click that, click another, click another, click another, and before you know it, you're studying weaving in Japan when you started on King Arthur. This is kind of like that, where you have just an A to Z, and you can go in there and find out things you've never heard of. And then if you want to go type that into the internet, you can learn more about these characters, and then who knows where your travels will take you. This next one is really obscure. Um, I had to special order it. I did so a couple years ago. Uh, I think I brought it up. Yeah, I did in my other King Arthur video. It's uh, King Arthur and the Gods of the Round Table with some lovely cover art that I don't mean to be mean, but I could maybe do better, better than that. <coughs> and I'm not an artist, but that's okay. It's by David Dom. He's a, dun, 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 an author and drew it with a heart for Wales and a passion for Arthurian legend as well as Celtic mythology and history. So obviously anyone claiming to be a druid today is a member of like a new religious movement because the druids were kind of, you know, kind of got, got that bad treatment uh, by Caesar. But... Uh, it does mean he's interested more in the religious dimension of these tales, or the spiritual, mythical dimension, which I also am very interested in. And I actually think this is a super interesting book. And I do quite like it, especially because he makes King Arthur a Scorpio. And I'm a Scorpio. So because of that alone, it's at least a 9 out of 10. Now this one super tangentially related to King Arthur. Um, also kind of obscure, maybe, Realm of the Ring Lords, which sounds like something Tolkien wrote, and that's not by accident. Uh, the reference is intended. Lawrence Gardner. Um, I barely even know what to say about this one. It's, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, per se, but it's bizarre. It's a lot to digest, and there's a lot of statements made about a lot of groups and people that if they're true, um, it really means a lot about the world. So he's very much uh, anti-Christian, anti-church, and obviously a lot of people are, um, and that's not at all why I'm calling him bizarre, as in like, you get used to that view in the modern West. But it's um, more so kind of, it's got this whole thing about a secret religion of the grail um, and the kind of history of that and the way that uh, es exoteric events, things above the surface, relate to this esoteric grail religion, culture, lineage, kingship thing. And so... Um, there's a lot in there. Uh, it's quite depressing because if he's right, we're kind of boned. Like, uh, there's not really any more Grail Kings or Fairy Kings, which is another thing he talks about. Because they all got Ixnade. They all got uh, the bad treatment. So, interesting book. If you like kind of like wooey, like, you know, um, Head in the Clouds type stuff, I think it's quite entertaining. And... It could be, for some people, very illuminating. I really don't have any statements to make on, on the 
veracity of its claims. They're so large, you'd have to be a scholar of so many different um, fields to really argue it properly. Most people are going to either reject or accept his statements based on feelings, if that makes sense. Like if you hate the Catholic Church and are a, I don't know what the word is these days, you know, new religious movement enjoyer, um, you might really like what he says in there. So do with that what you will. And then this one, don't mind my napkin I have in it as a bookmark. It's not a dirty napkin. A lot of you have probably heard of this one. Bernard Cromwell, The Winter King, an Arthur novel. It's very much, um, I was disappointed, as you can tell by my napkin. Which maybe I haven't uh, dove in enough to actually judge it properly. But uh, I like the King Arthur stories. I like the kind of high fantasy of them. You know, um, bright and colorful and swords and sorcery and all that good stuff. And this is very much like kind of the tagline is, uh, this ain't your grandma's King Arthur, you know. Um, it's all dark and depressing and kind of awful. Durfell, once a captain in Arthur's warband, recalls the dramatic days of willful Guinevere, arrogant Lancelot, abstracted Merlin, and the intolerant Bishop Sansom, vying for mastery amid faction and bitter chaos. But above all, he tells the story of Arthur, royal bastard, I've been called that a few times, unwise lover and inspired warlord, the only man who can hold Uther's throne for its infant heir and unite Britain's squabbling kingdoms against the enemy at their gates. Um, it makes, like, pagan religions or pre-Christian religions look really freaking wacky. Which I know there's elements where they were by the modern sensibility, you know. But I think it, it kind of, like, I don't know. I just wasn't impressed with the setting immediately. Doesn't mean it's all bad. And I probably should give it another shot. Progress my napkin dive deeper. Out of all these, if you're interested in King Arthur learning more about him, I would definitely recommend the most. If you're a scholarly type with a penchant for reading and a brain that can work around on the archaic language, then more to Arthur. It's important to get to the source, you know, or one of the sources. Um, I guess source is not a good word, like any of the coverages of pre-Christian stories, myth, and traditions, whether it's from Snorri Sturluson or Geoffrey of Monmouth. It's not an origin, it's a funnel, right? So it's a surviving bit of it with a lot of interpretation put on it. So in here, of course, King Arthur is a Christian champion, which a lot of people know him as. To a lot of people, they probably think that that's what he always was. I've, I've seen it online, you know, King Arthur's a Christian figure. King Arthur's this. It's like, Okay, you know, again, I don't know a lot of Christian figures who are consulting ladies submerged in lakes, receiving swords from them. But Jeffrey of Monmouth manages to to work that in there, which, of course, like in medieval literature, you'd have to, because otherwise he wouldn't be viewed as a hero, King Arthur. If he was a pagan king, people would just not like him. So that's just kind of how it goes. So that's a great book. This one's fine, as in, like, it's very much what it is. It's a directory of, it's like a phone book of Celtic dudes and dudettes. And then, but yeah, my other big recommendation would be the Mabinogian. It gets a huge recommendation. I think it's lovely. Um, it, not, it doesn't have to be this particular rendition or binding. I'm sure there's more beautiful bindings than this. But it's, uh, it, it inspires my imagination and makes me interested in the tales um, and it's old it's, it's a relatively faithful preservation of these traditions so that's enjoyable this one's good for just quick reading coffee table type thing and this one I would definitely recommend to anyone who wants the druid perspective on that so, thank you for watching. I hope this was relatively entertaining. 
I have this weird feeling that I've left a book somewhere on a shelf. I'm sure I have, but this is relatively my complete collection of Arthur books, so that's them. Wouldn't trade any of them for the world, and just like I wouldn't trade any of you for the world, 